And uh, welcome to the summer edition of Illinois Youth Soccer Coaches Connection. Here's the schedule for today. I know Chris will be joining us. Here he is. He's joining us right now. Fantastic. Uh, so he's going to lead us off here in a few minutes. We'll give him a little chance to get prepared here. He had some internet uh, issues. And then Rico's going to come in and talk a little bit about the referees uh, and give, give us a quick update on uh, some new uh, ideas and thoughts about hopefully improving the referee situation. Um, then Chris and myself will kind of finish up concerning competition, premiership update, and then coaching education. Okay, so uh, as we get started here, and we'll get we'll hand this over to Chris. I know he just joined us, so I'll give him a little bit of time to get prepared. But uh, feel free to put any questions that you have into the Q and A. So we'll be happy to answer those questions. Um, if there's anything that uh, you want specifically asked, you can direct message the panelists or you can certainly direct message any one of us individually. So we'll be happy to do that. So uh, hopefully um, if you have anything specific, we can answer it on, on here today. If not, we may just send you an email or send out some information a little bit, a little bit later on. So, all right, okay. So um, we'll just check in with Chris. Everything good on your end, Chris? I know you're just getting sorted out. If you need a little bit more time, Rico is ready to jump in if you if you need a little bit more time. Yeah, give me two minutes. If Rico can go, I'm powering up because we had a power outage not too long ago. Not a problem. Thanks, Chris. All right, so I'm going to hand it over to Rico with the referee update, and then Chris will jump in after that. That's Chris Lyons, not Chris Jam Rosie, right after that. All right, Rico, it's all yours. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Not a problem. Can you see that? Yep, all good. Okay, hi everyone. <clears throat> so at IYSA, we're planning to implement a small-sided referee program. Uh, this summer, we're gonna offer some pilot programs and, and then go into full effect, hopefully in the fall of this year. Um, obviously, many of you are aware of the referee shortage, um, have, have experienced it yourselves in your games. Um, so we felt there was a need that we needed to step in and offer a program uh, to kind of help supplement that. Uh, you've seen a lot of decline in referee registrations. Uh, since June 3rd, we've currently have 2,919 referees that are certified. And of those 2,919, 1,217 are new referees. So the goal of our program is to bring in more referees and improve the retention of the new referees. And of course, fees can get a bit expensive uh, when you add additional expenses like the uniform or equipment, you know, by the time a person's done, before they even do their first game, they're about $150 to $170 in the hole already, just from course fees and equipment. And then there's also a big time commitment for referees to become certified, whether that's just a new referee or someone that's going to be recertifying for the year. So our objectives for the program is to establish a foundation for new referees that are coming into, into soccer, uh, increase the referee numbers at the grassroots level. Uh, so we plan to provide a situational-based learning approach. It's a lot more hands-on. Uh, it's going to be cost-effective option, uh, so referees can get involved and started. We want to create confidence in referees so that that increases the retention. Uh, simplify the registration system. It could be a bit cumbersome. Uh, when new referees are trying to sign up in the digital learning center. And then we also want to provide more guidance to new referees, whether that's through mentorship, uh, signing, all those aspects. Um, we want to make sure that referees have more understanding of the process. Um, ultimately, the goal is to move more referees in our program to become certified U.S. soccer referees. Um, so we're not trying to un undermine any referee courses or the ISRC, the goal for us is just to increase the pool and then increase the number of officially licensed sort of, uh, referees in US soccer. We wanna minimize the barriers and provide some flexibility for those new uh, potential referees. Now the course structure, um, we looked at, we're looking to do a 60 to 90 minute course. 
Uh, it will be in, in person and there will also be an online component. The courses will be offered by IYSA, but clubs themselves can also host the courses. That way it provides you know, players an opportunity not having to drive the different locations, they can do it right in their backyard. Uh, we plan for the curriculum to be engaging and to be hands-on learning. We will target youth and adult participants. And the goal is to have the course cost between 25 and $30. Um, with that fee, we will also include a t-shirt, a whistle, a lanyard, uh, a watch, all included in that fee. Along with that, we will provide insurance liability and medical coverage uh, through IYSA, but this is just strictly for IYSA sanctioned games. So it can be league games through any affiliated league or any sanctioned tournament. Now the potential curriculum that we're looking at, obviously it's gonna include laws of the game, which will be the online component. And then referring back to the situa situational based learning, which will be in-person, this will include, you know, how to, you know, different things like how kids can, how, how to check in kids at a game, how to introduce themselves to a coach, how to blow the whistle for a kickoff, for a foul, how to end the game, other things. So when it comes to what to do, you know, what happens when you get your first assignment for a game, what happens, what to do when you get to the field. These are all different things that we think are important for a referee to build some confidence and understanding and keep them in the game ultimately. Another aspect of the situational base will be what if. We've all seen different uh, situations come up in a game. So what if a kid falls down and starts crying? What does the referee do? What happens if the kid catches the ball? You know, these are U8 kids. They're more facilitators than referees at this point. So that's kind of the idea for the curriculum. So currently the timeline is, Right now we're developing that curriculum. Uh, we plan to work with the SRC for feedback. Um, in the next couple of months, we wanna work with a couple of clubs to offer our first programs. Hopefully we can get between 25 and 50 participants. Um, by the fall of 2022, we'll have a more updated curriculum based on feedback. And we're gonna look to add five or more clubs and hopefully expand to a hundred or more participants. In the end, we all want referees uh, to cover our games. So hopefully this new program that we implement will provide that for everyone. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. My email is listed on the screen there. If you wanna be a club that's one of our first pilot programs, again, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thanks Rico, appreciate that information. Uh, there was a few things there that were thrown into the chat. So I'll let you answer those questions, Rico. And I think a few people were asking okay. for the, the numbers that you shared at the beginning. So maybe you can share some of those, the numbers that you had in the chat as well. Um, so any specific questions, please send Rico an email at odp at illinoisyouthsoccer.org. Or if you want to direct message him during the course of this, that'd be great. And if you as a club, Want to jump straight in? Send us a note ASAP and uh, we'll get you started right away. Okay. All right. Thanks, Rico. Appreciate that. Yep. All right. So we're going to pass this over to Chris Lyons, who's a, the Midwest Market Manager of Vivio that we work very closely with. Looking forward to uh, hearing about all of the new portions to Vio as well as how we're utilizing it as well here at Illinois Youth Soccer. All right. Over to you, Chris. Awesome. Uh, Adam, thanks for having me and apologies for the minor delay here. Uh, Michigan's been very friendly with weather lately. So um, a couple of things we'll talk about today just with VO, um, just trends of video, how video is being used in today's game. Um, quick setup. We'll do some VO training footage, show a little bit of the platform, and then we'll open it up to a couple of questions just based on the platform for today. And then if there's additional questions um, throughout my email is going to be at the end of the slides. And then if you see in the top right, there's a QR code that links everything directly to the Illinois landing page. So if you are interested in taking a look at the partnership in detail, you just scan that and you'll go straight to the web page. So with that, um, we'll go into trends of how VO and video technology is being used today. Um, I know everyone's just come out of tryouts or still going through tryouts. Um, 
video is heavily used these days within evaluation of players, not just um, within games, but training sessions and even tryouts. Um, gives players visual cues, allows coaches to break down games within team analysis with tactical performance, um, also helps players with the recruitment level. Not just players, but coaches are using it from the recruiting side to bring players in. Um, so it's been a very, very vital tool for that. Um, impacts of video in today's game. Again, um, going back to player development with accountability, um, allows players to see what you're talking about, allows coaches to implement their philosophy and playing styles. Um, and then one of the other thing, again, just recruitment across all levels of the game between high school, college, semi-professional and players looking to play professionally. So additional cases where video has been massive and these are just through questionnaires that we've done. Um, it allows coaches today to view a game after the game has been played without um, without the emotion that coaches see throughout the game. So everyone can either be hot-headed or, you know, very quiet during a game, but it allows you to actually go back and break a game down after the game's been played. So this is where video has been incredible. Um, through the tryout process, taking video, watching teams play that you're now inheriting, it allows you to see um systems of play players individually because we all know through the trial process um it's a quick in and out process as well so video helps tremendously there um chris sorry to interrupt i don't know if you have any slides to share with because we're not seeing any slides if you had anything let's rewind then let's see what's going on here <laughs> Okay, I didn't want you to get too too <laughs> far in, so I know you had the information on the screen. Yeah, I don't want to don't want to go over the platform if uh, nobody can see what I'm talking about here. There you Let's go. See, perfect. Is this better? Yep, you're all good. All right. <laughs> so um, we'll share this presentation too, just to kind of talk about, or you guys can see the slides that I've talked about previously. Again, just a quick recap um, of the evaluation visuals, team analysis and recruitment. Um, these are the four major trends that we're seeing video for going into the impacts, just breaking down within each, the accountability for players, coaches, parents, and referees. We've seen a trend where, um, you know, coaches can say that they're doing things, but then video doesn't lie. Same with players. And this goes and holds uh, parents and referees accountable as well. So the additional cases, again, just recapping this, um, the subjective viewing, going back and viewing a game without emotion, um, inheriting new teams, further, ed further education. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, just with how VO and video technology is implemented um, in current coaching courses. Um, and then it also helps with incidents, um, which we all, we all try to stay away from. So um, video development for players, um, how this helps in today's world. We all know that players are very visual. Everybody likes to see what you're talking about. Players can really break down a game that way. Um, coaches can as well, but it's harder to compare today's player against another player without them seeing what you're talking about. So this is where video technology has been very, very instrumental for player development. Um, within our platform, private conversations, you can break down moments with players. Um, you can also take, you know, your player profiles, make them private. You can also make them public for the recruiting process. This is a breakdown of how video technology could potentially work within a club training space or in a, in a typical week. Um, Saturday, if you're looking to play games, and again, this isn't something that you have to follow, but this is something that we've done some studies on. Um, Saturday, where we look to play a game, you're recording. Sunday is your recovery game or recovery day as a team. You're not playing um, if you have a late training session. Monday is where coaches can now start to go in and look to do a match analysis, break down games, break down moments to now build on their week. Tuesday would be your technical part of your week. So you're working on your sub principles. Wednesday, now you're going into the tactical 
gameplay, uh, um, applying your technical and tactical into going into your weekend. Thursday, you're now working on your technical side again, again, implementing your tactical prep. And then you've got um, Friday, you're able to do your weekend preparation. And then you can do a final game analysis going in. Um, again, this is just recommended, um, not recommended, but um, a study that we've found trends in today. So what our platform offers. Okay, within our platform, within the editor, we have our detection where now we're detecting our goals, shots on goal, goalkeeper interaction, free kicks, corners. Um, so we're now defining important moments within the game. Um, you can tag players, start conversations with players, make private highlights. You can go into an interactive view. You can create individual moments. Players can now create profiles and tag and make those public for the recruiting stage. We have a draw on screen function, directed highlights, and you can store games throughout your playing career. Um, we'll go into this stuff in the platform as well. Um, so don't worry. The analytics. So this is one of the things that has been very anticipated by a lot of coaches. Um, this is one of the latest upgrades that we've done to our platform. We've included a momentum graph. Um, the momentum graph I'll show on the platform. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the platform. Now you can easily identify moments within the game to see if there's been action on your end on the other team's end. So you can now define between moments and build training sessions off of that. Um, 2D maps, this is the relevance of shape for your team as you're playing the game. So this has been massive now because you can now implement your tactics um, and get an overview of how it actually looks on the field. Um, and then from the referee side, we actually have a referee blip on the 2D map. So if you're looking at referee development, you can now see yourself moving on a game. The last part that we've added, which has been pretty important, is the heat map. This is, again, defining moments and um, team momentum within the game. So before we go into this, uh, I just wanted to show a quick video. Um, again, my connection, I apologize for today, but this is just before getting ready to record. This is your setup of the, the tripod and the camera getting ready for the game. So uh, if you don't mind, Adam, can you give me a thumbs up if you see it start playing? Hi, this is Toby from Veo. How to set up your Manfrotto 3.8 meter, 12 foot tripod. Loosen and extend the legs. Prepare the camera, attach it to the top with the camera mount. Clip it into place, turn on the power, connect your phone to the camera. If you purchase sandbags, Place them on the base of the tripod. Extend the tripod up. In the second extension, adjust and make sure you can see the full field. Check your phone and you're ready to record. All right, so that was just a, a quick uh, quick setup with a 12 foot tripod. Just putting the, the weights on the bottom, you know, especially if you're on turf, if you're on grass, again, you can use weights or stakes. Um, and then just always using you know, weather and elements as consideration as to when you set up. All right, so now two, two different things that we'll go into here. Um, the one on the left is a training, um, a training environment. So one thing that Vito has been very instrumental for now is, is coaching development. A lot of coaches are using Vito. Um, so this is just a quick blip of how you can look to set up as opposed to setting up for a game where you're setting up at the half, shooting down the field, and then now you're downloading the VO footage and implementing this into um, the, the sound that you're using as well. So just a quick view here. Right out, make it. Okay, Adam, so maybe give me a thumbs up position. if you well, see this. Can we get our heels right on that touch line? Same thing with you, Jada. Okay, so when we have the ball, can you get really, really wide, try and unbalance the back line, right? Stop from being from being compact. Does that make sense? So that's just from a starting position. 
And then when we receive it, can we be a little bit more direct, get the ball, drive, and put a cross into the box? Okay? Well, we start from up here. So this is, again, okay, just going up. into, I'll mute go this for, for a second. Uh, um, this is one of my favorite angles as a coach as well, um, being able to shoot down the field and actually show players the lines and the breaks that you're talking about within your training session. So this is where, you know, VO has also been instrumental within the training environment and then with coaching education. So we'll move on to next. This is what everybody's waiting for, the platform itself. So this is just a game um, that was recorded in state cup so it's a rel it's a um a game that was recent and i'm just going to go ahead and fast forward into some moments and we'll go through now the the new additions as well as some of the analytics that um i was speaking about earlier um so one one noticeable difference straight away when you watch a game on the platform is on the top left of the screen not only are you seeing a scoreboard but you're also seeing a timer so now you can actually go into the game if you're taking notes as a coach and find minute nine and break a game down um, within your notes as a coach. So this is pretty neat. Um, this, is, this is a pretty big milestone as well. And then just reflecting the scoreboard to make it look like a, a, an actual game now. So the boys, the girls, they've, they all enjoy watching these on big screens because everybody likes to watch themselves on a big screen TV. Um, what I'll do here, you can go and now you can turn a radar on. So now this is, again, because it's a corner kick, you're going to see the box is very packed in. But moving throughout the game, you know, your, your blips will move around the field. Um, if any referees are on the call, this is kind of the neat thing as well. What you can do here is I could go into settings. I can actually turn the teams off and I could turn the referees on. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually showing referees. And then I can reflect, you know, my team. And then I can also reflect the opposing team as well. So I can look to create a bigger picture with this, bring it back, or I can also move the 2D map around, around the screen as well. So we'll turn that off for now. Um, the next part, okay, going into the settings. Again, if I don't wanna watch with the scoreboard, I can turn the scoreboard off and work watch normally but everybody likes the scoreboard, so we're gonna leave that on. Um, on the right, you can see these are all automatically generated highlights. And now through match detection, it's actually gonna dictate which team the highlight has now been created for, which is kind of neat. So now I can go through and filter and watch only my team highlights or only the opposing team highlights. So this is a, a pretty big um, set for us here. Within the analytics, going into match details, okay, here's the score. I can look and go into stats. So now it's dictating all of the highlights that have been created. So if I'm creating yellow cards as well, red cards, hopefully that's not, not very common that, and we need a highlight for that, but we can also create those in here as well. The next part is finally the heat map, um, just within the analytics side here. What I can do here is I can dictate, again, if I want to watch minute nine to minute 12, now I can move and see, okay, my team wasn't very active against the opposing team. And this is going to show our team on the ball as well, which is kind of neat. And then I can also filter between first half, second half, and I can also create or go from my team to the opposing team right here. So. That's the heat map. And again, you can go through and decide which moment within the game you'd like to see. Going underneath. So this is the momentum graph. And this is one of my favorite new additions, personally. Um, I can go through and look at this momentum graph and now see which highlights are relevant within the time frame. So if I'm looking between minute 16 and minute we'll call this minute 22. I can look underneath and see, okay, I was in the opposing team's half for four minutes, but we didn't generate a shot on goal, a free kick or anything. So now I can go back as a coach and I can break this down 
particular, I can break this four minutes down and see what went wrong if we're applying the principles and the tactical um, session that we, we worked on during the week. So this has been pretty big. Um, filtering through the highlights here as well, I can decide again if I only want to watch my team highlights or if I want to watch the other opposing team's highlights or if I just want to watch everything at once. If I want to go ahead and watch shots on goal, I can actually click shots on goal and it's going to now auto filter all shots on goal and it's going to do build up 10 seconds before the shot on goal and then 10 seconds after and then it will filter into the next highlight. So you can see shot on goal and goal. So that's going to be a combined highlight. Then what it'll do, we'll go into the next one after that. So, and then if I want to speed it up, I can always just quickly go next highlight as well. So just a quick function here. From here, um, I could break a game down even further. If I want to just go ahead, I'll pause this. I can change the viewer mode. I can go into an interactive player. So this is where a lot of your directed highlights and opening the game up and creating individual moments happens. From here, because the game's recorded in 180 degrees, I can actually focus on any point of the field that I'd like. So right now you can see that we're in my, I would say this is my defensive third. If I'm a goalkeeping coach, I can actually work on my goalkeeping um, placement. From here, if I wanna deep dive this even further, I could go into create. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and pause the game here and I'll start building out my highlights here. So I could do a goalkeeping highlight and now start to create an individual moment highlight. So I'll just go ahead and create keyframes here. And then if I would like to, you know, spin the camera a little bit just to show some difference, um, I'll go here. And then we'll go ahead and shrink this down. And then now we'll just tag a player by the at symbol. So this is generated from the profiles that you've added into the platform. So we'll say, I'm gonna add, um, we'll add Jackson. I can do, I could do a, a blip saying work on stepping into the middle third. I'm not sure how many goalkeeper coaches would say that to their goalkeeper um, when you're in the final third, but from there, what I can now do is I can make that public so the whole team can see it. I could do only involved players. Or if this is just a note I want to see for myself, I could say this is only me. So that way it doesn't detect or let any players know I'm starting a conversation and it would avoid sending Jackson a message here as well. So for sakes, I'll just do a, um, a public. I'll do create the highlight. And now I'll go back to my highlight list and now see the rendered highlight right here. This will take a second just um, again, because it's now reprocessed in that clip in 4K and it will add this into your highlight list. The other nice thing to what you can do in the momentum graph is once this is done generating, I can actually see this in my match momentum and I can filter through all of my directed highlight clips. So moving from directed highlight and interactive, if I wanted to go in and mess with a highlight that's already been created, go into the edit feature, and I can now decide if I wanna make that highlight shorter, longer, if I wanna add drawings to identify players, I would come in and start boxing players within here. If I wanted to box opposing players, I could hit here. And then if I'd like to also draw, you know, I can say focus should be here because these players, you know, are back and forth there. Um, and this is kind of neat because now I can go in from here and again, just like social media hit at and start to tag players that are on this profile. The shortcut to this as well is just by hitting choose players and I can filter through this side here. 
So um, then from there, I would just go ahead and hit save. And then as you can see, now that um, the directed highlight has now rendered, I can go back and I can hit play here and it's going to only show me where I focused on um, when creating that moment. So, and then apologies on my internet here is probably going to take a second to, there you go. So now you can see that I just haven't physically moved the camera doing small motions and then it'll, it'll quickly spin because of the, the motion I made. So that is the directed highlights. That's editing current highlights. Um, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, and again, we're, we're here to help if you have questions on that. So going off the platform, going back. So now um, into the next part, through the partnership that we have with Illinois, um, everybody's eligible for a $200 off um, coupon. What you would do is you would just scan that QR code in the top right. You'd actually go to book a call and then you would be able to chat with a sales rep from there. Um, current users, because it's budget season, we're actually extending a 50% off um, going into budget season. So it's a great time to invest if you're looking to add more going into the fall season. And then um, that's it. That's it from VO today. Um, here's my contact details, just my email lines at vo.co. If you guys have questions and want to reach out, if it's something where you're looking to incorporate VO into your budget season or into your fall, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but from here, what I'll do, I'll open it up for a minute or two, Adam, just for questions on the platform, if there's anything I can answer real quick. Absolutely. I know Mary Jane wanted to uh, just mention something from the safety. The video was great, so we appreciate that. So Mary Jane, if you want to just touch base on the safety aspect. Yeah, uh, the, the camera is an incredibly uh, amazing piece of equipment and technology. Um, but there are some issues with the anchoring uh, of these cameras. There have been two incidents involving cameras. In one incident, the camera was not properly mounted to the tripod and fell on a parent and broke his collarbone. Another incident involved a tripod that was not properly secured for the wind conditions. The camera and tripod toppled and just missed a player. Um, in this case, the coach refused to anchor the camera and the game was forfeited. Uh, please keep in mind that this equipment is heavy and could inflict very serious injury if it falls on someone. Uh, also, Illinois Youth Soccer does not provide insurance coverage for claims resulting from the use of personal property, including but not limited to cameras and tripods. So please anchor all equipment according to the manufacturer's instructions for the environmental conditions. Uh, and Chris, could you address uh, some of this? Um, I, I would think the, you know, if there's concern, more concerns on this, um, definitely reach out. I know that we um, provide, you know, the, the tools to make sure that tripods are securely, you know, mounted to the ground. I know it's difficult within turf and just making sure you have uh, sandbags, but if you have questions on how to properly uh, secure one of these, uh, please reach out. Thank you. Great, thanks Mary Jane, thanks Chris. Um, don't see any questions here in the chat yet. Uh, a lot of people saying thank you very much. Awesome. All the information there is fantastic. Um, we can certainly, um, you know, share any questions that we have and, and certainly pass them on. Um, just as a kind of a side note, within all of the things that we're doing within coaching education, uh, we're utilizing the VO cameras a lot. Uh, so we've been able to. Uh, give some of the coaching uh, student coaches that we have the opportunity to use those video cameras. So uh, by videoing their sessions, uh, especially if you don't have access to them, if you do not have access to them, I think it's a, a discussion with the, with the people who make those decisions to potentially look to see if you can add one because um, every, every person that utilizes it says afterwards, I want to get one of these. So I think, uh, that's kind of, it kind of sells itself. And now you add all of these fantastic features. It's just going to make it even easier. So if you're a club 
if you're a group, uh, a referee organization, whatever it may be, I think that will be something um, that you can certainly touch base with Chris on and, and go from there. So any, any final thoughts, Chris? It's always it's always nice to be back involved with Illinois youth soccer. So no, I appreciate you guys having us. Great, thanks, Chris. We appreciate your time, and uh, feel free to stick around. And if there's any questions that pop up, uh, we'll be we be ready to share those. So thanks again. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, I'm going to pass it on to the other Chris, Chris Jamrosi, who's going to share his screen and talk a little bit about an update concerning competitions and things happening this fall. There you go. All right, can every, uh, you see that? We good? Yep, now all we're right. good. Yep. Uh, first, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, all those teams and clubs that participated in um, Illinois youth soccer competitions this spring. Uh, obviously, Mother Nature uh, proved to be a little bit difficult in the early part of the season, but we were able to adjust and we appreciate uh, everybody's participation and understanding as we work through through issues. Now we uh, look forward towards the fall season. Um, so we'll go. I'm just going to go over uh, what's planned for the fall as far as statewide competitions. Um, and we're going to do this by uh, by age of team. So we're going to go youngest to oldest. Uh, just a reminder that these statewide competition are um, exclusive to Illinois Youth Soccer members, um, and you're a member of Illinois Youth Soccer by being registered to one of our member competitive leagues that are listed here. So if the league is not listed here, it's not considered, it's not one of our member competitive league, so you wouldn't be eligible unless you registered with them for the fall. Um, first one we're going to go through here is um, our Back to Soccer Festival. Um, this is one that hasn't been around for the last couple of years due to the impact of COVID. Um, so this is our event for our youngest age teams. Um, we ha will have not only games on the field, but additional off-field activities for the teams. Um, the registration date for this is July 22nd. This will be a one-day event based on gender of the team. So our girls teams will play August 20th, boys teams will play August 21st. This is before the, the league season kicks off. Um, so it's just a nice getting back to playing soccer um, event. A um, Couple of changes that we're making after evaluating it uh, with the time that we've had off. Um, we will not be keeping any score. Uh, these will just be come out and play festival type atmosphere. Um, each player for the teams will get a free T-shirt that's included in your registration. Um, as I mentioned, we'll have some off the field activities um, to keep the kids entertained in between games. We'll also be doing a team photo for all teams um, and all the games will be played seven versus seven. Um, this is planned up at the sports core facilities in Rockford um, and the registration for all that is open right now. Um, the next one up is our Junior Cup competition. Uh, that is for our 11U and 12U teams. This is our 9v9 um, event. Um, we offer three tiers of this, the Junior State Cup, the Junior President's Cup, and the Junior Illinois Cup, which is exclusive only to teams that play in the third or C division or lower of league play. Um, the registration for this is also open through July 22nd. We will announce the schedules August 1st. Um, one change that we have adjusted with this as well is we are looking to have the group play games played prior to the start of the league season. Um, so those are, ten, those are scheduled for August 20th and 21st, uh, again in Rockford. So this, this event will be held in conjunction with our uh, soccer, back to soccer festival. So there'll be all those additional off the field uh, opportunities for the teams playing in this as well. Um, we do have the caveat in there that teams can agree to move those games off of August 20th and 21st and, um, and they just have to be played by a certain day after the fact um, to allow flexibility for teams to adjust. Um, so the semis and finals for the girls age group for this will be October 15th 
And then the boys will be the following day on Sunday. So if you're looking to play in the junior cups and you're looking at your schedules, um, it would be wise to avoid scheduling games for if you're a girls team on October 15th or a boys team October 16th. So that way you don't run into any conflicts with your league games um, should you advance beyond the, um, the uh, group play portion. Um, the next uh, competition we'll be holding this uh, starting in the fall is our uh, readjusted, our new formatted 12U Illinois Midwest Conference qualifier. Um, we went over this kind of at length in the last Coaches Connection, and that information has been sent out um, and is posted on our website. Though so this is the competition that we will use to determine which teams earn placement into the fall of 2023 13U Midwest Conference. Um, it's being adjusted to a, a year long format um, to allow some additional flex, uh, schedule flexibility and not try to condense everything into an already tighter spring season. Um, the registration deadline for this is July 1st. Uh, it is earlier than everything else so that once we know the number of teams that will be participating, teams can make an educated decision on how, what else they'll schedule um, for the 2022-2023 the season. And this way you'll know how many games you'll have in this. And then you can also plan if you wanna do additional um, competitive league divisions and things like that. Again, all the details on this are, are on our website as well. Uh, the applications for the Midwest Conference for U13 through U19 girls and U13 through U14 boys are now open. Um, those applications are due by June 27th. Um, and the age groups that they are running for the fall are the 13 uh, boys and girls. The placement for those fall divisions are based on our currently running 12U Illinois Midwest Conference qualifier. 14 boys and girls, and then the 15 through 19 girls. Uh, state premiership applications are also open. Um, same divisions as Midwest Conference. Um, the, only the only thing we run in addition to that is we do offer a 15 boys uh, division in the fall for those teams that have eighth graders or uh, players that aren't playing for their high school team. So those applications are due by July 12th. Uh, also open now is the State Cup and President's Cup applications or registrations for the fall. Those are due by July 8th. Um, this competition is for our high school age girls teams. We'll play the entirety of the competition in the fall. So 15 through 19 girls, uh, the important dates, Again, registration deadline is July 8th. Brackets will be announced July 28th. Um, we will have our play-in games, again, August 19th through 21st. So we'll have lots of stuff going on in Rockford that weekend. Uh, so this way, again, we'll know prior to the league season starting um, what our final brackets will be for uh, both the State Cup and the President's Cup. Um, and then uh, our group play weekend is October 14th through 16th. Um, the President's Cup quarterfinals will be October 16th. State Cup quarters and semis the following weekend, October 21st through 23rd. And then the President's Cup semis and finals that following weekend. And then the State Cup finals November 4th through 5th. Um, one thing we are going to uh, adjust in terms of the cups is we are looking to play all of our 14 U age group play in games um, in the fall. There'll be more information about this that'll be coming out soon, um, but I just wanted to share it. So we will uh, open registration for 14 U teams in the next week or so, in addition to our high school aged uh, girls team. The registration for this will go a little bit longer. Um, and then based on the, those registrations, we'll determine which teams have play in games for either State Cup or President's Cup. Um, and we'll announce those by September 13th. 
Um, and then those play in games will be scheduled uh, the same weekend that we have the uh, elimination rounds going on for the State Cup and the President's Cup. Um, the primary reason we're looking to do this is again, it will hopefully alleviate some of the spring scheduling congestion because now going into after the conclusion of the fall season, we can have the final brackets announced for the 14 u age group and which will allow teams better chance to plan accordingly for the spring and just alleviate some of that congestion. So again, there'll be some additional information about this coming out and it'll be shared with um, all teams in the very near future here. So that, uh, that's all we have for competitions for the fall. Um, one marketing piece that, uh, again, we'll get some more information out to everybody in the near future here is something I had hoped to get going towards the end of spring, but um, we weren't able to get that accomplished. So we're looking to create an online e-directory, uh, e-publication, where as opposed to us creating generic club listings for everyone, we're going to allow the clubs to control the message and the promotion they want to do for their clubs. Um, so we will uh, send some more info about this. So each club that's uh, currently registered come the fall season will have the opportunity to have a full, uh, free full page ad in this e-publication. Um, and we'll pub uh, publish it. That should be early. That shouldn't be early December. Uh, that'll be early September. We'll look to publish that. And then going forward for each subsequent fall and uh, spring and fall season, new teams and clubs will be added to that. And if clubs want to change their, their ad, they'll be able to do that as well. So that is all that I have right now. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. Um, if not, uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, via email. And all of, again, everything for the fall, including all registration links are posted now. And um, all the details are available on our website and an email blast and some social media went out about it yesterday as well. Great, thanks, Chris, appreciate that. Um, so just real quickly in terms of uh, wrapping up here, in terms of just what we have in terms of coaching education, things that are happening around us. Uh, as we always talk a little bit about um, making sure that you're clear on what courses we've got coming up. Uh, here we go. So again, any new coaches that you have, we want to make sure we get them through the learning center. Uh, there's the process. They should, everybody should have a profile in the learning center. So please make sure that you've got all your coaches in there. And that's even if they have current licensing, it's a database that we're able to keep all of our information and certainly help coaches move forward in their coaching education. Um, and then these are the things that we've got coming up. Uh, all the courses are still in a blended format, just as a quick reminder on terms of what blended is. That's typically a mixture of virtual and in-person. So preparation for virtual presentations and webinars and meetings very collaborative it's certainly not myself and other coach educators just talking the whole time it's a discussion piece and then we also have that in-person piece um, it goes along with the d license currently we have one d license going on we will be opening up registration for our full uh, pre-course meeting so they'd be ready for that so that next d license will be opening up in the middle of june um, and we still have uh, our other C license open as well. So if there's people interested in being part of that, please make sure that uh, you sign up through that as well. You can go to our website, go through the Learning Center to be able to be part of that, okay? Um, in terms of ODP, uh, just a couple of quick dates so everybody's aware of what's happening. Certainly players, I'm sure, have reached out to you as club DOCs, administrators, that they may be part of these events. We've got our, a sub-regional showcase, which is coming up here next weekend in Cincinnati, Ohio. Players have been informed. They've already signed up and they're planning on attending. Uh, and those That's a three-day event. So there's one game per day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then the regional camp, which will be hosted in Rockford, will be July 8th and 10th for the boys and 15th and 17th for the girls. 
uh, obviously they are informed they know that who's going so just make sure that uh, that information goes out to you as well and then finally just the last thing I wanted to talk a little bit about was uh, some really exciting things moving forward within the offerings of the C license um, certainly uh, as we move forward into kind of a new realm in terms of coaching education I think this is going to be really pivotal in terms of helping us hopefully get more coaches certified in terms of licensing. So basically what that means for us is uh, as, a, as a member association and a provider of coaching education within US soccer, we are now able to host and organize any license in terms of C license per need. So what that basically means is we can set up courses similar to what we do within our grassroots courses and our D licenses, we can do that at any time. Um, so what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, the potential of people to partner with in terms of working with it. So what that means is we're going to hopefully look to host maybe not only just two traditional blended C licenses, but maybe up to anywhere up to five blended C licenses. So just be conscious of that. So in terms of next steps, here's what I would suggest you do. Uh, if you're a club or a group that's looking to potentially host a C license outside of our two traditional uh, courses that we do, please let me know ASAP. So the requirements are pretty simple. We need to have at least 12 student coaches. There are different time and in-person options, which I think is pretty exciting. One particular option is instead of having four days in a row or two weekends, there now is a one day weekly meeting option for the in-person. So that means, for example, maybe every Sunday for four weeks, we could meet in person. Uh, so there's lots of flexibility concerning these options. This is going to be starting in 2023. So you've got a little bit of time. But I'm asking for you if you have an interest because we need to submit our interest forms to US Soccer pretty quickly. If you know or you think you can partner with somebody, uh, maybe another club within your area, another group, and you feel pretty confident that you can get 12 student coaches to be part of a course, we want to be able to reach out to US Soccer and say, yep, we want to run a particular course with this club or group. So please contact me ASAP uh, and then that way we can move forward uh, and hopefully give more opportunities for more coaches uh, to become C license coaches. Okay. All right. So that's the information there. Wanted to make sure that you get that. Again, reach out to me if you've got any questions concerning coaching education. And uh, our next meeting scheduled for September the 7th. So plan on putting that into your calendars right now. It will be a virtual full meeting. If anything changes, we'll be sure to, to let you know that way ahead of time. But plan on that. We'll also have a few other new guests as well as updates from Chris and myself. But uh, look forward to seeing you again in preparation for the fall season. I know it feels like we're just finishing the spring, but the fall season will be within us very, very quickly. So, again, want to thank you and everybody on the call for your time. Please make sure if you need anything, reach out. Be happy to do that. Thanks again for being part of Illinois Youth Soccer and our Coaches Connection. Uh, we'll stick around certainly for a couple minutes if you have any questions. But again, thanks everyone. Take care and have a great rest of the day.